What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another special edition of Third and Longhorn. We have a very special guest today, a freshman star wide receiver, Mr. Jonte Cook. Jonte, welcome, man. Thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Uh, well, to start off, man, uh, kind of, you know, obviously, you know, you came in as a, a very highly touted freshman. I think uh, uh, everyone is uh, very excited to watch where, where things go for you. I think, uh, you know, you're... You're one of the guys that a lot of people are are ready to to kind of watch explode next year. I'd say is the is the best way to put that. But uh, it's kind of kind of talk a little bit about your transition. You know, obviously coming from from high school, being one of the best receivers in the entire nation. Obviously getting here. We talked. You know, we've talked with uh, DeAndre about this of getting here, and there's a ton of talent ahead of you. Like Texas has one of the deepest rooms at wide receiver there is. Talk about what that adjustment's been like for you and how you've handled that. Well. Uh, it was definitely not what you expected, you know, being one of the top guys in the nation in high school. But, you know, you soon realize when, once you get here, it's like it's not even about that no more. It's like a whole lot bigger than just mm. one guy. You know what I'm saying? So, and then your time will come, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you can't go to the league after one year anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. I really just <laughs> embraced yeah. my role, shall I say, you know what I'm saying? And just mm -hmm. enjoy it the moment, you know? being where my feet were. So that's what I can say about that. I, I felt like that answer right there lets you know how much you've grown up just from getting here. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, you. I know you played big time football in DeSoto, right? Yeah, yes, so, you know, before you was born, I played this, DeSoto, DeSoto was big time, especially with KC Printers and yeah. uh, Marcus Tubbs, mm -hmm. Tatum Bell, just all those guys, mm -hmm. whatnot, coming from a big time um, high school and coming into um, – Coming to coming into UT, did you feel like it got you ready at the University of Texas, being at a big time school like DeSoto? Definitely, DeSoto definitely is like high school D one, shall mm. I say? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like I know Dre said he went to Bosco College Prep, well, yeah. DeSoto is College Prep Public School. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So play play the toughest competition. You know, you get coached really hard. Uh, you practice against top guys every day. It definitely prepared you. Definitely prepared me for UT. And 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 another thing, um, I know you work with um, 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 Hooks, yeah. Martin Hooks, and I just you know I, I follow him. He's a Waco guy, whatnot, but uh, he trains the best um, throughout the nation or whatnot. And I saw some film on you. So when I see you running routes out there, I mean you, you're already game ready. I mean even though you're a true freshman, mm -hmm. you, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm giving you some love right here. Your your route your route tree is nice, man. I mean sure. I, I just can't. Um, I love that University of Texas has those guys. That, they're not playing as much right now. They're young. Mm -hmm. Of course, we got a you know big time roster playing right now, but yeah. mm -hmm. we got guys on deck just mm -hmm. like ready, waiting right. to go. And uh, um, I can't wait till you get your opportunity. I know you you, you know you get in the game here and there now, but uh, your time's coming, man. So uh, you you keep being patient, like you've learned and what you said earlier. Uh, I, I can't wait, man. Sky's the limit yes, for sir. you, bro. Appreciate that. Yep. Yeah, I got a question about um, <clears throat> kind of your mentality. I remember the first time we met, um, I don't know if you remember, we was at the dealership. Yeah. And basically, you know, we had a conversation. I was just asking how you feel about the situation coming in. And you was basically just like, I'm going to play regardless, mm. you know. And yeah. I feel like, how do you, how does that mentality set you apart from everybody else, just having that confidence in yourself? I mean, you just got to believe in yourself because, you know, anything can happen. Like, obviously, we've seen it, like, Anything can happen. Anybody one play away from yeah, yeah. not being in there. So you just you just gotta keep yourself up, bro. Like you can't fall a victim of the situation around you. Shall mm -hmm. I say that? Like yeah. you, you gotta stay the same regardless of what's happening. No, I would agree. And I think that's the perfect mentality yeah. to have, especially as a young guy. And I think that that actually you know speaks to Sark's culture as well. You know, mm -hmm. just building the, and getting those type of guys in the program. Yeah. That's what's really gonna keep us on this you know path of success. Yeah. So. You're great for us. Yeah, I, th I think there's there are very few schools in the entire country where you wouldn't be starting, right? And I yeah. think that that's what's so that that's what's so crazy about this team is that's how good that receiver room is. Yeah. And and mind you, they still can't keep you off the field, even with that level of talent. Yeah. You've you, you know you've had you've had some moments, obviously, you know, like against Baylor, you had the huge yeah. the the 51 yard catch, and you had some others. But I think. I think we're seeing that. I think it's got everybody excited, right? We're losing a lot next year, but I think we're excited to see what you know what happens. But along those lines, who who have been 
you, you know, some of the best mentors for you on this team who kind of took you under their wing? Uh, I'd definitely say X. X for sure. Uh, he's my roommate, like, when we travel. So, you know, we talk a lot and just talk about, like, what he's going to do in the game, what I might do if I get in, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just uh, coming up with scenarios for each other, you know, just being ready for whatever happens, you know, just lifting each other up consistently because, you know, as receivers, like, you want the ball every play, but obviously that's not going to happen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen, though. So it's like, you got to be like, come on, eggs, bro. Just, just keep mm -hmm. running your routes, bro. Just keep running your routes full speed. And, you know, it's just eggs. Uh, Byron Murphy, for sure. But, you know, I've been knowing him since I was, like, uh, 13. So yeah. that's just, like, family. And then Jay Witt. Jay Witt is just a great leader. Like, uh, he's just... He's just a great guy to be around, just to have in your locker room. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a Jay Witt in their locker room, for sure. Yeah. With, the, with that being said, kind of you talked about, <clears throat> like, all the leadership within the receiving room. As we look towards next year, not that we're doing that, but I have to ask this question. As we look towards next year and all of this talent's leaving, yeah. we're, assuming, we're assuming Jay Witt's gone. We're assuming Adonai Mitchell's gone, X potentially gone. Yeah. How do you plan on, like, carrying that standard in the receiving room? Well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Me and Dre, we kind of, like, we got our own swagger, bro. Like, we're our, we're our own people. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we'll just see. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to have our swag, our confidence. We're going to lead the, the young guys because kind of we're going to be the vets. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, we're going to get probably a portal guy or something. But, like, mm -hmm. as far as Texas guys, like, program guys, we, we're those guys. So, mm -hmm. You know, I can't really put a name on it, like, what are we going to do? It's just, mm -hmm. just going to have to see because, you know, everybody's journey different. Yep. Everybody's journey different. And uh, being that top dog in the in the receiving room, does that make you a little nervous or does that excite you? That excites me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that yep. that yep. excites me. I love this face. Like, I told you, he didn't even have to say a word and yep. he answered that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> excites me, 100%. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, I think you were, uh, you were part of uh, – probably one of the most iconic pictures this year that yeah. came out of Texas. And I, you know exactly what yeah. I'm talking about. It was like the LeBron D Wade yeah. photo where mm -hmm. X is catching that, that pass deep and you know, and you're already like celebrating. Oh, oh, talk right, talk right. through a little, and we'll show the picture so everyone can see it, but uh, talk through a little bit of what was going through your mind on that play. So like we had went over that play like so many times throughout the week. Cause coach Sark, you know, obviously he had coached at Bama. So he was telling us like, I know how they're going to play this. Like, when we when we bunch up like this, they're going to go quarters and they're going to play top down to where it's like, basically, like, if you run, if you get this safety's attention, he's going to take you to where, like, it's just nothing but green grass yeah. over there and it's one-on-one. -on -one. So, like, when I felt the dude pull down on me, I'm like, oh, it's a touchdown. It's like, X <laughs> <laughs> running a big post with nothing but green grass, yeah. but, like, got to be a touchdown. So, Smart, man. just turned around and. Touchdown. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That, yeah. What a great moment, man. That was cool. That was a cool one. What what's what um um Dante, what's what's been the biggest gap? I think I've asked uh, DeAndre this. What's the biggest gap from high school to college for you this year? Not that you couldn't get it get over this hurdle, but was it mentally, was it physically? What part of the season where you say, Man, man, this is you know, this is the biggest jump from where I was at at DeSoto and now I'm here at the University of Texas. This was probably the biggest jump. I, I I jumped over it, but this is the biggest jump. Hmm. For me, it was definitely spring ball, like just really just Oh, when you first got there. Yeah, yeah. like just being in the fire, like, you know, and like everybody being good. Cause like at DeSoto, like if I catch a hitch and I make the first man miss, I'm I'm out. I'm, out. I'm gone. You feel me? Yeah. I feel like I had a practice. I caught a pass. And I made the corner miss, but like <laughs> oh, the swarm was that coming. Was, yeah. That pursuit yeah. was, yeah. was a little yeah. different yeah. from right. when I was right. like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You realize like, mm -hmm. all right, I gotta be this much better, I gotta be this much quicker, this much faster. Mm. So can you talk about uh Coach Beckton and his workouts? Cause I know for me when I first got to Texas, and I had been a fifth year when I got there, so Boy. it was a rude awakening for Boy. me. So how was it for you coming out of high mm. school? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I know. Man, he says so much. That's so what I know. So it's very impressive. He's like, how can I phrase this answer? <laughs> Man, you can't. I know. Uh, I'm glad you didn't say it. Okay, bro, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, 
But I really can't put a name on it. It's, it's well, crazy for real. Like, it's really crazy. crazy. Bro. Like, it's OD, bro. Like, well, you ever, like, all I, I'm going to tell y'all this. Like, <clears throat> through the summertime, like, all of our knuckles are black. Yes, like, sir. We're from... we doing push ups on the okay. turf. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, knuckle like, push ups. Okay. We're doing bear crawls on the bear turf. Like, crawlers. anything that you mm-hmm. usually do on your hands, mm-hmm. we doing Good it on, on our knuckles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, Don't that right there alone uh-huh. is 110 sand pit. Mm-hmm. Sand pit. <laughs> sand pit, bro. Sand pit. Sand pit, bro. <laughs> Sad nah, that's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you got some PTSD from it. Let's not talk about that. Bro. You got yeah. what? Three more? Two more? Two at more. least? Two more. <laughs> two more. Bro. Yeah. Two more. Well, Jonte, I, I mean, obviously, this this team has taken a big step this year from where they, where they've been in the past, and this, you know, they're they're kind of going to another level. Like, what in your thoughts? Why, like, why has this team gone, like, experienced the, the success they have? I mean, I know we've been hearing it over and over, but it's true. Uh, the culture, the culture in the locker room is just, it's different. It's like, it's like a real brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, uh, we're definitely playing for each other. It's like, I want to see you succeed, bro. We need to win together. It's like, it's love. Like, it's real love. It's not no hatred. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's mm-hmm. celebrating for each other. It's just, it's just a good football team, honestly. Yeah, that makes sense. And that came out in that photo we talked yeah. about, right? That's you celebrating someone else's yeah. success. And it's real. Mm-hmm. Like, it was caught in the moment. And I love that. Yeah. The uh, Oh, yeah. this uh, I'm excited to, to find out this one. What pro receivers do you model your game after? Hmm. I really can't say I model my game after anybody because like, I don't really just like watch one specific person and be like, all right, I want to do this just like that. But. CD is my favorite receiver, so like a little ways that he be catching the ball, like he he high points it and spins away. I try to do that a lot. Uh, the way that he like breaks tackles and maneuvers in the open field, I try to like you know do do a little bit of that. So CD, as far as my route running, I definitely try to model it after Justin Jefferson because I think he's the best in the league. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are, those are some good ones. I, yeah, I, you know, CD is good. who came to mind for yeah. from just from what I've seen of you. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. that that's where I saw that. What's um walk us through your pregame food, music, routine. What do you do? I mean, this year it's been different. Like every game, because you know, like the first couple of weeks, it was like everything was brand new to me. So I was really just trying to like figure out where I'm going, what I'm doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? But like as the season started going on. I would just, we had a lot of night games. Wake up, eat breakfast, you know, watch whoever's playing, uh, go to film, and then eat lunch again. And then it's, I don't know, it's just a unique routine, bro. Like, it's not nothing specific that I did, because, you know, <laughs> I didn't really, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't the star, bro. I wasn't the number one receiver, bro. I'm just playing my little role. So I'm just doing kind of what everybody else was doing. Nothing too special. For music. I listen to Ken Carson a lot. On okay. He's a new guy. Y'all probably don't know him. But I don't. I'm like, yeah. I listen to a little bit of him. Yeah, okay. I, don't know yeah. I don't know if he's for me, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's for me. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like hip hop, oh, but it's like. It's like that rock star. Yeah, it's hip-hop. like new age yeah. hip hop type shit. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I ain't heard of that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not playing football? Sleep, bro. Mm. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. Oh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's for, crazy, though. For those of you that, that couldn't have seen this before, Jonte uh, was waiting for his interview and uh, fell asleep waiting for the interview. Yeah. So we've, uh, I might, I might have a photo of that that we might be able to Sleep. share. Fell, falling asleep is an understatement. This dude was, yeah. oh, he was gone. Oh, he was gone. Back. I was scared to wake him up that he was, was going to jump. Man, uh, <laughs> those workouts, That's man. Crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. Tell you. Well, if uh, uh, this uh, this this is kind of the last one I have, and if anybody else has any, uh, if you weren't a football player, what career do you think you would you would be in, or where would you be working? Like not athletic at all. What whatever. Yeah. If I wasn't a football player, like, and I was still an athlete, I'd definitely be like probably running track. Okay. Yeah, but not athletic. Mm. I don't know. I'd probably be somewhere like in the music industry for sure. Like I probably wouldn't be the rapper or the artist, but I'd probably be like behind the scenes, like trying to make a beat or something. Because I really like music, so that's probably what I'll get into once I get done playing, mm-hmm. or like something like this, you know, like podcasting. 
mm-hmm. talking. Media, entertainment. Media, yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Being, being in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. You're a wide receiver, man. <laughs> well, John Jay, thanks so much for taking the time, man. We appreciate you. That was fun. And uh, good luck to you, man. We're excited to watch you. Yeah, appreciate it.